Hello everyone in year four. Um, I want to show you today how to make a line graph. Here is an example of a line graph. Uh, the reason we use line graphs is to show continuous data. So that's something usually that goes over time. This line graph shows you how the population of seals have changed over time at an area called seal point. You can see along the bottom is the year and along the side, on the left hand side, on the y axis, we have how many seals there are. So in 2009, there were 40 seals living at seal point, but in 2011, it had dropped to 30. Today, I'm going to show you how you can draw your own line graph. First of all, we need to start with some information that we put onto a line graph. This one here is an example of how my heart rate changes during and after exercise. This is very similar to what we did in class the other day. Uh, you will see along the left hand side of my chart that we have the time in seconds. This is the information that will go along the x axis, the bottom of our line graph, because this is the time. This is what is going continuously throughout the entire of the data collection. And on the right hand side, you can see my heart rate, and that's my beats per minute. So that's how many times my heart beats every single minute. And you can see that the heart rate went up during the exercise all the way up to 130. And then it became, started to go down again as I started to finish my exercise and I began to rest. The first thing you need to do is to draw your Y and your X axis. The one that goes along the bottom, the horizontal one, is the X axis. And the one that goes along the side here is the Y axis. When you've done that, you then need to figure out the scale for your axes. So let's go back to our information. And our time in seconds goes all the way up to 210. And it jumps up in groups of 30. Overall, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 pieces of information that we will need to insert. So let's have a look here. We always start over here with 0. Um, we're going to try out a few different spacing options to see if they work. So we need to go all the way up to 210. Let's try these out then. We could do 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180, 210. Uh, we've still got some squares left over, so we could see if we could make it go a little bit further. Let's try every three squares. So 30, 60, 90, 120. 120, 150, 180, 210. So I could just put an extra little bit of line in there to make it fit in. So let's put those in. Now the numbers need to go onto the grid lines. So that's where my 30 will go. 60, 90, 120, 150, 180, and finally here, 210. And I'll just get a ruler and put that line in. Um, but first of all, I also need to put in a label for my axis. So we go back to the chart and the label that I've got at the top of the information is time in seconds. So let me put that in as well. So now I've done my X axis. I now need to do my Y axis going this way. So let's go back to our data and see how high it goes. Well, our lowest data is 60, but our highest is 130. So the scale on the side has to go up as far as 130. Uh, and as always, we like to make our graphs as clear as possible, so we try and get it as tall as possible. We could squish it all into just a few lines here, but they'd be really quite tricky to read the data. So let's just try out some ideas. We could go up in, let's have a look, every two squares could be 20. So 20, 40, 60, 80, 120, 140. Well, that's only halfway up my line. So let's see if we can double that. So every four squares, 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, well, we could go a little bit further 
and go up to 140 and that would have all of our information on it. So let's do that then. So let's put in our zero at the bottom. And again, you need to get the numbers on the grid lines. You can't write them in the boxes. It must be on the grid lines. Let's go up four squares and that's going to be 20. 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, and up here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 140, and I'll draw that in a moment. The other thing we need to remember, same thing again, we've got a, a title here for our axis on the y, on the x-axis, we need to put one over on the y-axis as well, if we go to our information, and the label will be the heart rate beats per minute. So I'll turn this around. And there you go. We now have our line graph set up. Now that we have our line graph with our axes ready to go, the next step is to actually plot our data onto it. So let's go back to our first bit of data. When we had zero seconds, my heart rate was 60 beats per minute. So we have to find zero on the seconds, which is here, and then we have to go all the way up to 60. And when we get there, we put a cross. So let's just double check, zero seconds, 60 beats per minute, brilliant. The next bit of data, 30 seconds, my heart rate was 70 beats per minute. So we find our 30 seconds here and we have to go up to find 70. Now on this we have 60 marked here and we have 80 up here. 70 is going to be in the middle, which is there. And this is where most children find it quite tricky, is if we're jumping up in intervals and it's a number that's in between those intervals where they should be putting their x. The other thing they struggle with is as we move away from the zero se uh, section here in the time is they can't line up with the times along the bottom. So let's go for our 60. 60 seconds, our heart rate was 110. There's 60. And we have to go all the way up to 110, which is in between 100 and 120. There we go. Then we have 90 and 120, so we have 90, and we're going to go all the way up to 120. 120 seconds, my heart rate was 130 beats per minute, 120, all the way up to 130, and again that's in between 120 and 140. At 150 seconds, my heart rate was 90, so I must have finished doing my exercise now and started to calm down. And at 180 seconds, my heart rate was 80 beats per minute. So 180, go up to 80 beats per minute. And finally, at 210 seconds, my heart rate was 60 beats per minute. So there you go. There I have my line graph. The only thing missing now is the line. Now, I can't take a video and use a ruler at the same time, so I'm going to join the spots and then I'll show you what it looks like. And here's my final line graph. I have joined up all of the crosses in order and you can see that I've got this lovely peak that's going on here. So now I could ask you some questions about the line graph. For instance, I could be asking you at 60 seconds, what was my heart rate? And at 60 seconds, you could follow the line up, find the spot, go across and see that it was in between 100 and 120. So that must have been 110 beats per minute. I could ask you at what time did I have my highest heart rate and you would find the peak which is here and then go down to see what the time was when that happened which was 120 seconds. 
I could say to you at what time was my heart rate 90 beats per minute. So you'd go up here, you'd find where 90 is, which is in between 80 and 100. Follow the line across. There it is, follow the line down. And it was 150 seconds, my heart rate was was 90 beats per minute. When you've made your own line graph, which could be about anything, as long as there's something to do with time going through it, then try asking some questions to somebody and see if they can answer it using your line graph. That is the way to learn how to use line graphs effectively. So remember, the things that you need to remember when creating your own line graph are make sure that you've spaced out the information on your x-axis evenly and that the intervals going up are even as well. And then remember to put your labels on. Really important so we know what the numbers are actually meaning. And then remember to have a lovely title so we know what the graph is about. And hopefully you can have a practice at doing some line graph making. If you need to get some square paper to use, there is a fantastic website called papersnake.com and I'll make sure that I put that onto my web page so you can click it and access the square paper. Have a lovely half-term holiday.